Hey y'all, it's Amy with Renewing Stitches. Glad you are here today. So glad that its sun is shining. <laughs> the sun is shining. Today we are going to do a floss tube extra. Why we're doing it? It's been a while, hasn't it? It has. It has been quite a while. Um, one, two, two full weeks. No, three weeks since I've done a floss tube extra. And it, that's way too long. Three, that's two weeks too long for sure. It's just May, so it may be this way next May too. <laughs> Today, I'm really excited. We're going to flip through the premiere issue of Treasures in Needlework. This is um, grab any that you can find. <laughs> These are great, great magazines. Let me just show you size wise. This is a just cross stitch. And this is the treasures in needlework that I just hit my face. Um, the size itself is different. I mean, it's like a good, good half inch bigger. Um, the pages are lovely. Um, it is. These are. There's a lot more reading material, less charts, but they're the charts that are there are quality, quality charts. Um, this is the premier issue. Uh, and it's 1992, Volume 1, Issue 1, 1992, and I don't know the month. I have a few of these. No, I have two, but I will be looking for more. These, this is like coffee table flip through good. Um, I'll just show you. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so on the cover, I was going to tell you also that the, the publishers that are that put this out are also their better homes and gardens um, and cross stitch and country crafts. So they do, uh, is it, yeah, the better homes and gardens, cross stitch and country crafts or cross stitch and needlework that it eventually evolved to, but same publishers. So if you can find these, uh, grab them. If you don't want them, I will take them. Let me know. <laughs> I, yeah, so good. Okay. First one, this is called Jennifer's flowers. And it's based on the artwork of Jennifer Pel Pelham. It's this piece right here. 191 stitches high by 132 stitches wide. And the detail, I, I this is one of the ones that I want to stitch. I want to see it in person. It's a country, looks like a country. It would go great <laughs> in my house. Just a country, not, um, not, uh, just a spring country, not overly so, just a uh, an easy Sunday morning type stitch. So, and the advertisements are also lovely. Now, I still haven't got the setup where you can see top down, but I'm going to try to show you everything. But okay, so. Eva Rosenstand. I know we've talked about her before, but look at, look at those. There's another um, advertisement page with her stuff in it. And oh, so pretty. Look at this um, anniversary. I want to say it's an anniversary sampler. So pretty. All right. Then we have the regular, like for sewing machines and stuff. In the first page, or the, um, then the um, table of contents. And a letter to the reader from uh, the editor. So good. All right. So then, then there's a feature of the stitchers gallery. And this could be any stitches. Quilting, um, lace work, uh, need, any type of needle work. So here's, here's this, what is in this one. Tells you a little bit about about it. I love this one. I love that one. Love that one. I mean, they're all pretty. The lace there. I think I've seen that before. And it doesn't say what the pattern is. It's a cruel work sampler. But it doesn't say what the pattern is. I'm wondering if I remember it from a family member. I don't know, but look at the table runner or placemat. This is 
just do a silhouette and put um, an alphabet behind it. That bird is lovely. That's a needlepoint. Mm. So pretty. And then there's a, it's called Connecting Threads. And um, it talks about living with needlework right here. Um, and I'm just going to read you a little bit of it real quick. It says, needlework doesn't belong in a drawer waiting for future generations to discover it. It belongs in our lives now on beds, tables, windows, clothing, and yes, even the floor. Our ancestors used needlework to decorate their everyday articles, clothing, draperies, bed covers, banners, and rugs. Some pieces such as an intricate stump work box or a fine wedding veil were more treasured than others, but all pieces had practical use. So it just talks about how, like in our day-to-day -day living, we can have it out and have it, I mean, it, yes, it's beautiful on the wall, and yes, it's um, as a picture or a pillow, but um, we don't, I don't, we don't have it on our tables anymore, do we? I don't. I have a couple of bread cloths that I've stitched or that my mom has stitched, but it's not, they're not out and about for use. So why, why don't we do that? They're beautiful. Why don't we do that? <laughs> I mean, we love, we love cross stitch and needlework. Why don't we just have it out all the time? Um, now some of them do need to stay, you know, behind glass, but yeah, let's, Let's get it out and use it. I, I'm, I'm challenged. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I hope you're challenged too. Moving on. The next section is called the Gazette. And their page is just like this color. Um, talks about uh, what's going on. There's a cross-stitch extravaganza. Um, cross-stitch festival. The spirit of cross-stitch festival is, festival? Festival is in March of 1992. Also scheduled for May, September, and October. Uh, let's see. It was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, in March of 92. It was in Saratoga Springs, New York, in May. In Des Moines, Iowa, in September. In Sacramento, California, in November. So I just talked about what, what, it, what there's to do. Taking a class. Taking a tour of things around. Visiting local shops, there's competitions, a calendar of events. Um, oh, yes. So, also, it talks about this place is to love. And I don't know if it's there anymore, but it's called New Pieces Fabric and Chamber Music. And it's it was um, in Berkeley, California. But it's it's the... Only fabric store, or it was the only fabric store in America to have a harpsichord on the premises. Um, so it just, I mean, they would have uh, concerts, um, stitching and stitching and music. Um, just really neat. Quilting bee, I guess a quilting bee, right? Um, just neat. I wonder if it's still there. I googled it, but nothing came up. So it's probably either it's moved or it's not there anymore. Also, there are book reviews. One is the Quilted Exci Quilt Ex Man. What's the deal? <laughs> Quilt Encyclopedia Illustrated by Carter Hoke, and then the Anchor Manual of Needlework. Um, it's published by Interweave Press. So you have a couple of book reviews. And new product information. It talks about, um, let's see here, new pins and tote bags that were coming up. And then you get onto the calendar of events, which takes up that little sliver of a page and the whole next page. Calendar of events that year. What was in Texas? Nothing. <laughs> I'm sure there was, but nothing is listed here. Hmm, tours and travel. Wool and wonders of wool and the wonders of Ireland. Tour lengths range from six to thirteen. Tour lengths range from six to thirteen days. It allows you to discover Ireland while le learning traditional Irish needle arts. Yes, please sign me up. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, 
the first chart, see what I mean by lots of stuff to read? Um, I also want to show you that. Okay, the first chart is, sorry, my computer went to sleep. Um, it's called Welcome Friends, right here. And they have it framed, but I also wanted to show you a bigger picture. It's on the table of contents. This is without the grapes. There are grapes on the side, and I'll show you that picture shortly. But this is called Welcome Friends, and it is 104 high by 80, I'm sorry, 104 wide by 88 high. And here is why it is 104 wide. See the grapes right there? I wish there was a bigger picture of the one with the grapes. So the page previous was because it was um, where they took off a leaf, a couple of leaves, and the grapes right there. But it's pretty. Pretty, pretty. Lovely charting. Big, big squares, big symbols, lots of instructions, lots of finishing instructions. This one's neat. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a visit to uh, Bucklew Mansion. I believe that's how you say it. It's in New Jersey. It's still there. I'm going to link um, link it below. But it's this, uh, an article about Buckley Mansion. And there's a lot of needlework there. Look at that bedspread and coverlet. I don't really know a quilt. Yes. Hmm. And the in here is a chart. What did you see here? It's the, I believe it's the flower right here. This is charted for us in the, is that flower right there? It's charted for us in the magazine. But a visit to Buckley Mansion. Now this is a, still around. You can still tour it. It's the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, the, one of the uh, New Jersey chapters. Um, you can tour it through them, and I'll link it below, but that is very neat. I mean, oh, just the pictures. I just want to go see it. It's a museum. Yes, here it is. This is the pattern that was charted for the magazine. As a gift, it's 87 square. 87 stitches square if you do the border. Um, the interior flower is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 by 70 ish if you just do uh, without the border. And you see, I have a tab. <laughs> I have several. <laughs> uh, I'd like to stitch that. All right, the next one is called Ways to Say I Love You. It's the Valentine stitch, and it gives you instructions on how to do the um, all of this. There's a few things here. Okay, so there's the stitch. Okay, the um, Valentine stitch is 59 high by 64 wide. I was just checking my notes because there are a few things. There's also this little pillow, instructions on how to do the pillow. And then there's this chart here, the Cupid. And it's approximately 80 by 80. And it's called applique filet crochet. I think that's what it's called. And the neighbors are gonna mow, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Uh, oh yes, here's another picture of it. Let me get something to cover up the chart. But I mean, the pillow's beautiful. Look at that. How to do the edge of that. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. And then these are the little pillows that are also in the picture. Then it gives you excellent instructions. Look, you just lace and Maybe a uh, couple of very, very varying stitches. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, the next article is uh, Candace Kling's Ribbon Fantasies. 
if any of you do this, please let me know. I would like a, um, a Zoom with you so I can watch you do this because I can't picture it in my head. It's beautiful, but I can't picture how it's done. <laughs> All out of ribbon. All out of ribbon. Isn't that amazing? I mean, look, goodness. Look, they look like little rosettes and icing and flowers and piping. So pretty. And it gives you instructions on how to gather. But I'm going to need I'm going to need one-on-one um, -on -one help, please. <laughs> if any of you do that. This one has gives me all the the smiley face with the heart eyes, all the thimbles. I see what I mean by good coffee table reading material. I mean it's just thimbles. Mm. Okay, the next one, the next article is about Jennifer's flowers. The um, uh, front cover piece and this is the artwork that she did that that is based on here we go sorry I was headed down a little lower and then here's the large picture and remember this one's 191 high by 132 wide see my little face poking out of the side I <laughs> just want to make sure I have it in frame Oh, goodness. All right. The next part is called Ask Deanna. And the question of, well, one of the questions is how to tell, um, here's Deanna, if you want to meet Deanna. <laughs> how to tell a Spanish sampler from any other sampler. And she talks about it, um, what determines a Spanish sampler. And she, um, restricts her answer to the 17th through 19th centuries because, I mean, they're varying depending on where you are and how old they are. But um, she t talks about the distinguishing characteristics, and I made some notes. Um, so they're rich and dense designs, bright colors of silk, um, mostly X's, and most there's some dense floral and geometrics, and there's not very many with alphabets. Um, and the arrangement of borders is pretty distinct. So that's really neat. And then the other question was, what is the difference uh, between variegated thread and overdyes? So that's a good one. Um, variegated starts as a bleached natural thread, and then they measure blocks and dye it. And then the overdyed is you start with a base color and you add to it. All right. I believe. I believe that's what I remember <laughs> reading. Ah. Additional dies are set. Okay. Okay. You don't want to use over dyed items for um, things you need to wash, like clothing or linens or anything like that. Okay. Next is called. Um, home Sweet Home. This uh, kind of reminds me of uh, Mary Englebright with the coloring, but it's not. This is a design. I don't know that it says who it's by. Hmm. I'll have to look and I'll put it in the notes if I can find it. But it's called Home Sweet Home. 176 stitches high by 124 wide. Oh, I didn't notice. Did any of y'all, looky here, did any of y'all have your baby shoes bronzed? I have, well, there's a set of shoes that my sister and I wore that my mom got bronzed for us, and it's, I have one and my sister has the other. Um, also, look back here, there's a, they used a portion of the um, border as a basket um, mm -hmm. 
decoration. <laughs> Cozy is what I was thinking, but it's not that's not the word that I was looking for. Okay. Next one is the uh, filet crochet table mat. tabletop. Instruction, instructions for doing that. Um, okay, cottage comforts. Several here. They're called cottage charts. The stitched, uh, let's see here, where did it go? Oh, right here. This is 63 stitches square, 63 by 63. Um, the, let's see here, the horse. Horse nettle is 100 high by 72 wide. The cowslip is 72 high by 100 wide, so flipped of that one. And this is a larger of the horse nettle, so that's probably over two. And then that's a cowslip. And then the afghan, there's two, okay. Uh, I think there's a bigger picture of the, the two. Yes, where's my paper? Okay, so let's see if I can get this up. <laughs> All right, the two doves. 63 square, and then the uh, willow tree, which you can barely see. Mm. It's a willow right there. It is 60 stitches high by 147 wide, so it repeats. I, want, I don't think there's a bigger picture of it. You can kind of see it on the side. Let's see. <clears throat> no. Nope. All right, let's see if I can get you this. It's also right here too. So you can kind of see the willow right there. Okay. So several in that. It's called Cottage Comforts. And is that Cat's Paw? Did I do that one? No, I didn't do Cat's Paw. No. Oh. Cat's Paw 100 right here. I thought that was the um, cowslip, but that's the cat's paw. It's 100 high by 72 wide, so they're all about the same. 100 by 72, but one is, of course, the cow is long and the horse is, and the, the horse and the cat is 100 high. I think that's all there. Okay. Then, how to finish it with the edge, and then the pageant kings. They saw the star and rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Isn't that beautiful? This is 225 high by 174 wide. And on the back they made ornaments using the camels here. I'll show you. And there's instructions on how to make the ornaments. But look at all that. That is just about full coverage. I mean, there's not much there that's not stitched. So pretty. Beads. Um, I don't think there's any specialty stitches. Yes, there is. A majestic tribute to the Three Kings shines with an array of metallic threads, specialty stitches, and beadwork. So pretty. Look, I'll give you, here's a close-up of the faces. And it shows you how to do the specialty stitches. And how to do the um, tassels on the, on the um, ornaments. Pillow shams, great charting. It doesn't have a shaded overlap though. I just noticed that. It does from top to bottom if it if it um, changes pages, but like in the middle, if it crosses the the center of the magazine, it doesn't have a shaded um, portion. But on the next page, the continuing section has a shaded portion, so that's nice. 
quite a few um, threads and quite a few blends. How to crochet. Here's some more advertisements. We're almost to the end, but I wanted to show you some of these. Those samplers. Mm. The hard anger. That is so pretty. So very pretty. Look at those stockings. Mm. These are advertisements. It's not in there. It's so pretty. Such a lovely lovely magazine. And you have the section where you uh, can order supplies for several of the charts. So pretty. So pretty. And that is all. That is the Treasures in Needlework Premier Volume 1, Issue 1. It's lovely. Lovely. So pretty. I have several that I want to stitch. See my my notes. <laughs> okay, that is all for this extra. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be putting up another one soon. We'll get back on our regular schedule. Let me know what your favorite was, and let me know if you find any and you don't want them. <laughs> I hope y'all have a lovely day. I'll see you in the comments. Bye, y'all, and I'm glad y'all enjoy these renewing, renewing stitches. Bye.